Hello everyone, my name is Minko Getchev. I lead developer relations and drive the product roadmap for Angular. In this talk, I'll share with you how Angular CLI abstracts the build pipeline, taking advantage of Vite and ESBuild to make your app builds as optimal as possible. Before I go there, though, I'd like to set some extra context. I'll share with you some of the latest improvements with it in Angular, which set really high standards for our tooling support. Since the very beginning, Angular's runtime has been designed to be well optimized for a JavaScript virtual machine with a lot of micro optimizations in mind. We have a custom compiler, which ensures that it translates your Angular templates to optimal JavaScript instructions, taking advantage of JavaScript virtual machines inline caching by using monomorphic calls. But the change detection is still global. It operates in a similar way as React. Currently, by default, Angular will check your entire component tree for changes every time the browser's microtask queue is empty. In Angular, we have a way to optimize this, which is really similar to should component update in React or React memo, and in Angular it is called on push. It enables Angular to skip parts of the component tree and speed up change detection, but it also requires some manual intervention. You need to figure out which parts of the component tree make sense for on push, and you need, you need to enable it. We can definitely do better and make developers' lives easier. Only if Angular had more fine-grained knowledge about where the data lives and how it flows throughout your application, it could do way less work. In a more reactive system, Angular would only have to check the specific components it knows have had data changes. The team explored the reactivity space in depth and compared the different approaches in the context of Angular. We looked at hooks, but we discovered that while well, they operate in a very similar way and they have very similar limitations as the current system that Angular offers. We explored also compile time transformations, which enable reactivity at runtime. Angular has been having a compiler since the very beginning, so we thought that this is a very natural fit for Angular. We are looking into extending this compiler so that we can add static dependency tracking similar to Svelte. However, we decided to not go this direction because, well, this adds some extra magic, which could also impact the debugging experience for developers and also just changes existing JavaScript semantics. We also explored signals and well, we did a lot of prototyping, a lot of investigation, and we finally concluded that in this world, the world of JavaScript and Angular, well, the best fit is signals. Here is how signals work in Angular. First, we're going to wrap your data as a signal. You can read the values of your signals directly in your Angular templates, and this instructs Angular exactly where the signal value is being used so that later on when you set the signal value we can go to your template and update only the part of your template which is dependent on this changed value this makes everything way more efficient and also requires some more advanced tooling in the build pipeline to enable integration of angular with the signals library so that we can have this fine-grained reactivity Another feature that I'm really excited about that we have been working on is called deferrable views. In deferrable views, you can specify what part of your template you'd like to lazily load. Here, the framework is going to extract the segment of the template and all of its transitive dependencies as a separate JavaScript chunk, which will load lazily or be prefetched on a specific condition. In this example here, we're only going to eagerly download and hydrate the components outside of the deferred block. In this case, this is the app component and the navigation component. Everything else will be just loaded later. And here is how this looks in code. This new feature uses a brand new template syntax for Angular. It may remind you a little bit of Svelte or Mustache.js. We still haven't finalized the syntax yet, so we're making some research now, just collecting data from the community, just to make sure that we're making the right choice for everyone. In the template, here we have three blocks. The main part of the deferred template is 
what is going to be lazily loaded. Once it enters the viewport, notice that we have declarative way to specify when we would like to lazily load this. We're instrumenting an intersection observer here declaratively without any custom logic or any JavaScript. Next, we're adding a loading indicator. And finally, we're adding an error block, which will display if the deferred loading fails. So if you're doing this manually, there are going to be a lot of moving parts and a lot of opportunities to make a mistake. This declarative way to specify the deferred view and also when it should be prefetched and how, well, it sets some really high standards and really high requirements for the build tool chain because, well, it includes a prefetching heuristic, in this case, intersection observer. It also involves extracting the deferred part of the template into a separate chunk together with all of its transitive dependencies and tree shaking this all. All right, now you might be thinking, all right, we have signals and deferrable views. How do, we how do I even configure my tooling to support all of this? There seem to be a lot going on there. We're compiling templates of components to JavaScript instructions that interoperate with signals. And we also have deferrable views where we need to extract the view into a separate chunk while also tree shaking this entire bundle. Well, one thing that is still unique for Angular is that the core team at Google developed a CLI, which makes your life way easier. Pretty much the Angular CLI abstracts a lot of the complexity out of your build pipeline and the overall development process. It pretty much abstracts the functionality for creating applications, building these applications, updating your applications to the latest version of Angular, and translating your applications to different languages, plus way much more. Since we're here at VitConf, I'm going to focus specifically on our build pipeline. So we want to ensure that your production builds are as optimal as possible, which includes both bundle size and runtime optimizations. Traditionally, the ng-build command has been delegating the execution to Webpack to bundle your project. As a next step, we developed a build optimizer, which traverses the abstract syntax tree of the chunks that Webpack produced and annotates them for advanced optimizations by Terser. Finally, we pass these chunks to Terser to compress them. There is a lot going on here. We're compiling your Angular templates, styles, TypeScript files, and also we do a bunch of file replacements and so much more. This is a lot of complexity. As you can imagine, the Webpack configuration grows very rapidly and we'd like to just hide this complexity for developers. You don't want you to just have to deal with fine tuning your build config. We'd like to just enable you to focus on building applications. So abstracting all this under a single command also enables us to introduce a lot of performance optimizations under the hood in individual Angular versions. Let us look at how we started gradually introducing Vite and EOS builds in Angular over a year and a half ago. One optimization that we did was to replace our build optimizer, which was very much a simple compiler that we maintained with a just Babel transform. This made builds already 10% faster and it required developers to just run ng updates to take advantage of this optimization. Another improvement with that is in the compression part. We introduced ESBuild right before Terser. Terser is still there, but ESBuild is significantly faster than Terser, so we can just delegate most of the optimizations to ESBuild and for the more advanced optimizations that ESBuild doesn't have yet, we are passing still the JavaScript chunks to Terser. This already improved the build speed with another 10%. Now you see the value in abstracting the build command with the Angular CLI, asking all the millions of developers using Angular out there to update their build pipeline so that they can enable these two optimizations, this will be challenging. It will be years until developers switch to these new build improvements and also configure them properly. Also, they don't really have to think about it. We're abstracting the build pipeline in a single command and everyone just gets faster builds after running ng-updates. But now let us look at the more advanced refactoring of ng-build and ng-surf with that recently. We released the developer preview of our ESBuild 
based build pipeline, which entirely replaces Webpack. For experience during development, we use ng-serve with Vite because of its fantastic properties that enable really fast cold start. Let me explain a little bit more about this. If you look into an app with server-side rendering, we'll see that the ng-build command calls the Angular and TypeScript compilers directly to type check and produce JavaScript for both the client and the server. From there, we pass the entry points to ESBuild, which knows how to produce the final bundles using the output optimized by the build optimizer. This enables further build bundle size reduction thanks to the annotations that the build optimizer does. After switching to ESBuild, Vanguard observed over three times faster production builds for one of their applications that has over 100,000 lines of code. We're planning to make this new pipeline the default one in the next couple of major versions. All right, a place where we benefit a lot specifically from Vite is the ng-surf command. For our development server, we use Vite. We add a plugin which enables us to add custom logic into the response resolution and based on the type of the request, we have a couple of different options. The first one is to render the page in the server process and return the response. This is just the Angular server-side rendering. Alternatively, if the request is for a static file, we just read it from the disk and return it. Finally though, if there is a request for a JavaScript file, we take advantage of the lazy bundling that Vite provides. The initial bundle that that's needed for the rendering of the page is pre-bundled so that we can reduce the number of requests when developers open the application for the first time. We don't really want to have this waterfall of the entry points and all of its dependencies, transitive dependencies over time. We want to build everything together and provide it as a single JavaScript file. However, for all the transitive lazy loaded chunks, while well, we use lazy bundling, we're not bundling them when the developers run ng-serve, we're bundling them once they're requested for the first time. This enables fast cold start for ng-serve, also very quick page loads and incremental bundling of lazy transitive dependencies, thanks to Vite. There are a few things I would like to mention closing this presentation. The goal of Angular is to provide you with support for every part of your development process, just holistically. Internationalization and accessibility, they are not optional, but they are hard. We just want to make them easier for you. Angular strongly believes in these abstractions around complicated web development practices, such as built, and I already mentioned internationalization and accessibility. We want to make them abstract. We want to provide you with the best defaults so that we can enable them easy in your development process and uh, make them simpler. We are only able to do that thanks to fantastic communities, just like the Vite community, which enables us to evolve the internals of the Angular CLI and make the builds orders of magnitude faster, thanks to the tooling you folks are building. And last but not least, well, well, to take advantage of all of these improvements in your existing applications, just make sure you ng-update. The ng-update command is going to update all the packages, the build pipeline it is going to run code transformations over your applications to make sure you're using the latest Angular APIs and update your NPM dependencies. This is everything I had for you today. If you have any questions, you can find me on social media at mgetchev. And uh, thank you all. Thank you for listening. I really appreciate it. See you next time and happy coding.